Hi, let's take a look at a couple of uh, items for uh, your project number two. And first of all, we're going to talk about the cost of goods sold in the video. Uh, w of UK part three in that video uh, whenever you had a sale of an item uh, you do not have to figure out the cost of goods sold on that uh, here you will need to figure out the cost of goods sold only we just simply made it a 60% so 60% of the sale amount is a cost of goods sold and you'll put that in the special purpose journal along with the sale. We're also going to talk about payroll and we will take a look at how to do the payroll journal, uh, the payroll register and move that to the payroll journal. Okay, so um, you have your source documents you have were given payroll registers, an Excel payroll register, and you were given uh, publication 15T, which is the IRS documents where the federal income taxes are that you have to withhold are shown in there. So let's let's take a look first at the cost of goods sold. All right, so here what you can see is the sales journal, and whenever we make a sale uh, that on account, that's going to go in the sales journal. If we make cash sales, that will go in the cash receipts journal. Each of those two journals has a column, inventory credit and cost of goods sold debit. Now you can put those into two separate columns, one for inventory credit, one for cost of goods sold debit. Same thing here if you wanted to. So let's take a look at the first uh, sale transaction. And okay, so here we are with the transactions, the source documents, and our very first sale is invoice number 788 and uh, to Denise Hogan, that's our customer, and the sale itself is 1332.25, tax 106.58, and the total is 1438.83. So what we learned in that previous video is how to put just that sale information into, into the special purpose journal. So Denise was a sale on account. Okay, invoice 788. The account receivable is the total that Denise is going to owe us, which is fourteen thirty-eight eighty-three. Okay. The sales credit is the actual sale of items without the sales tax. So that is thirteen thirty-two twenty-five. The sales tax payable is going to be uh, done for the sales tax itself, 106.58. Okay, so now we have a debit for 1438.83 and two credits which total up to the same amount. So our debits equal our credits. Um, and the date date was on that uh, that 
that was July the 1st is the invoice date. So that would be the date that we would put on here. All right, so this is how our special purpose journal looked without dealing with cost of goods sold. Now what we're going to do is calculate out the cost of goods sold. We're going to calculate it out based on only the sale, not for the total account receivable, which includes the sales tax, okay? Just the sale part itself. So we're going to take 1332.25 and multiply that times 0.6, which is 60%. And that's $799.35. Okay. And so we are going to debit when you get down to the bottom and you have all your totals, you're going to debit cost of goods sold for the whatever the total is and you're going to credit inventory for uh, that same exact number. And again, you can split those into two columns if you want to have a separate cost of goods sold debit and a separate inventory credit column. And of course, you would still, as far as posting is concerned, you would still immediately post for Denise Hogan, and um, and then later you would post when you've got your totals across here. You would post those totals uh, to the general ledger. Okay, transaction number 27, this is on July 15th. We pay on a semi-monthly basis, we pay, which is twice a month. We pay and on the 15th and then whatever is the last day of the month, okay? And so you're given the, uh, the employees, Joshua, Don, and yourself, how many hours and remember that since it's twice a month, from July 1st to July 15th is a little bit more than two exact weeks. So even though this says 88 hours, um, that's there's no overtime there. Okay, there was 88 hours in that time period because it's a little more than two exact uh, weeks. Okay, so Joshua had 88 hours at 11.35 an hour. Don had 88 at 10.71 an hour. And you only had our work part-time, so you had 44 hours at $9 an hour. Now, the federal income tax payable, we're going to look that up in Publication 15, which is also known as the Circular E. You need to complete the payroll registers, total and cross-foot it, and I've given you a template, an Excel template that you can use to do that. However, you may make your own if you prefer. You can journalize then. Once the payroll register is done, you journalize the payroll from the payroll register. And I gave you a payroll journal as part of the special purpose journals, okay? The net pay is going to come out of the payroll checking account, which is a separate checking account, not the regular cash credit uh, checking account. Okay. Then you need to compute the employer's payroll taxes and um, the SUDA is 0.054, 5.4% to a maximum for each employee of $7,000. So once each employee passes at $7,000 of gross wages from January to whatever day we're doing, if they've passed that, then 
the employer no longer has to pay SUDA the rest of the year on that employee. FUDA is federal unemployment tax and that is .006 and that's also to a maximum of $7,000. So if the employee's already passed $7,000 of gross wages from January 1st to now, the employer no longer has to pay FUDA as well as SUDA. Now each state in real life is different as far as what their maximum is and I don't believe there are any states left that have a maximum of 7,000 anymore. South Carolina currently is 14,000. So, um, but we're going to use this 7,000 that they have here and just pretend that that's, we're in a state that has that. Okay, Social Security, we have to take Social Security out of the employee plus the employer has to pay the same amount. And that's 6.2%. There is a maximum that changes every year. It's somewhere around 160,000 for 2023. And it, um, it changes constantly. None of these employees make enough money. They're even gonna come close to the maximum for Social Security. So we don't really need to worry about it for this situation. Medicare is 1.45% on all the earnings or 0.0145 and there is no maximum so even if somebody made a million dollars they're still going to have to pay 1.45% on that million dollars. Now because we're not dealing with the maximum on Social Security we can add the Social Security and Medicare together so the 0.062 plus the 0.0145 which is 7.65% or 0.0765 for FICA. FICA includes Social Security and Medicare. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We have to take out 7.65% out of the employee and then we also have to do the same thing for the employer. And that employer payroll taxes is also gonna go in the payroll journal just like the payroll register totals did. Finally, we have to make a check out of the regular checking account, and that's going to transfer those funds from the regular checking account into the payroll checking account. The regular checking account has um, deposits being made into it from sales and stuff, and then we also pay stuff out of it. Whereas the payroll checking account, all we do is pay out of it, so it's going to run out of money pretty soon. So we have to uh, transfer enough money from the regular checking account into the payroll checking account to cover that payroll. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, down here, they also tell you that um, uh, Joshua and Don are listed as wages, expense, comma sales. And the bookkeeper, that's you, is classified as wages, expense, dot, uh, comma, office for when you put that in. 